Lou Del Bianco is our special guest today. He is the grandson of Luigi. Lou, welcome to Sunday Sauce Spot today. How are you doing? Marty, thanks for having me. It's great to be uh, in Kansas City with you, kind of. All right, so uh, your grandfather was Luigi Del Bianco. He was the chief carver on Mount Rushmore. What exactly did the chief carver at Mount Rushmore do? I mean, so if you look at Mount Rushmore, what can we see that uh, your grandfather did? All right, great. Well, my grandfather did several things. He was the only trained stone carver on the work. He was the only classically trained stone carver on the work, and that's a fact. And he had to supervise the carving. He had to teach the men how to carve. And he had to do the fine finishing himself, what, what Borglum called the refinement of expression. That's my grandfather in the studio. Uh, he is working with five foot models. And what he's doing is he's measuring points on the model so we can transfer the, those points so that they could be duplicated on the mountain. Okay. So when, right. when you look at Mount Rushmore, what, what exactly is it that I can see that recognizes the work of Luigi Del Bianco? He, he carved, uh, well, he, he supervised the carving. He taught the men how to carve, and he carved refinement of expression, the fine finishing. So, um, for instance, here he is. He, he was responsible for the refinement of the eyes, nose, and mouth on, on, the, on the four faces. That's and Borglum him. has that's documented him his picture there? That's him. He, he's refining a Washington's eye. He's 500 feet above the air. He's got a 40-pound a uh, pneumatically uh, powered uh, drill, and Borglum charged him with doing the finishing. He wouldn't let any of the other workers touch the eyes, nose, and mouth. They did carving. They could shape the face. They could shape the eyes. They could shape the nose. But the refinement that gives the faces that lifelike quality that sets them apart from just something being copied is what my grandfather was able to do. And Borglum trusted my grandfather's genius to do that. So when you look at the humanity in those faces, that's from my grandpa. That's unbelievable. So thank you for that great question. That, that's a great question, Marty, because that's really what he did. So he was a memorial stone carver. He started that way in Bari, Vermont. And what I love is that I used to have old timers come up to me and say, your grandfather carved Mount Rushmore. He also carved my mother's headstone. <laughs> so he walked in both of those worlds. My grandfather had sabotage directed at him. His life was made miserable. He was bullied. He, he was harassed. But we never found out the details of that because my grandfather was proud and he didn't talk about it. But I will tell you that at the end of the carving, uh, Borglum gets my grandfather to come back and he literally single-handedly refines the faces. Uh, and we have that all documented. And we have interviews with some of the workers who worked under him and how they said he could have finished the mountain himself. He didn't need anybody else. And so we presented all these uh, pamphlets, uh, all of this uh, records to the, lot, to the uh, staff at Rushmore. And uh, this is one of the things they said. We recognize Mr. Del Bianco in the museum with photos as a carver, but not as chief carver. I've seen the letter where Borglum refers to Del Bianco as chief carver, but I consider Gutson Borglum the chief carver. This is uh, Maureen Ballinger. She's the chief of interpretation, and she had the, the gall to... To, to, to appear more knowledgeable of Mount Rushmore than Guts and Borglum. And Marty and all of your viewers, this, had, this has gone on for 25 years. Back and forth with the uh, National Park Service and Mount Rushmore, they refused with all the evidence, refused with all the obvious evidence to give him the plaque he deserved until uh, this guy came along, Cam Shali, who thought, this is ridiculous. We've got to get to the bottom of this. So he proposition to me that he would send two historians to my house and go through the 75 documents and, and what, when they what did this, what was this gentleman's name that you just had the picture up there oh that's his name is cam Shally. he is the head or he was the head of all of the national parks in the midwestern part of the country he's the hero of this story so he that, did that's, what, he, that's what i was going to ask you it's because of him and you that that you're 
grandfather is recognized. Basically. Yeah, and I got to tell I got to tell you, Marty. Uh, when when Cam offered to to help, I was really uh, skeptical because there were so many people before him that made promises and then never followed up, or they would talk to Rushmore and Rushmore would somehow get to them and then they would come back and say, "Oh no, your grandfather's acknowledged in the museum." And so I was not optimistic at all. I was I was ready to hang it up after twenty five years, but he came through. When yeah. did he get recognized? What year did that happen, Lou? It was uh, September 16, 2017. Here is Cam and myself unveiling the plaque. I was so thrilled that he was there. Uh, so, La Familia so, was there. So when you're you're on when you're taking that cover off of that plaque, what what's going through your head, Lou? Um. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, now I, where, I, I where was ready to jump him. Where is this plaque? When where can you see this out at Mount Rushmore? Yeah, if you go to the visitor center, there's the Lincoln Borglum Museum, which is basically the museum of the workers. Lincoln was Gutson's son, who was considered his right hand man, but now everybody knows that it was really Luigi, and, and uh, he's in the uh, workers museum. I am working on getting him his own separate exhibit. That's my next my next goal because I think he deserves it even that. But he has the plaque. I'm happy. He is on the books as the chief carver, which has been denied for 80 years. You know, the historians, Bob Sutton and Tim Good, are also to be commended. They are the ones who said unequivocally, this man deserves uh, the credit of uh, Chief Carver. It's, it's a no-brainer. And they also inspired me to write a book. Uh, which I'd like to let everybody know about. It's called Out of Rushmore Shadow, the Luigi Del Bianco story. It's a reader's favorite book award winner. And if you get the book, you'll read all about my grandfather's incredible immigrant story, which your viewers will relate to, obviously. Um, his time at Rushmore with never before seen photos of him on the mountain, um, incredible documents. Uh, and then of course, they'll read the 25 year roller coaster ride to get him recognized, and it reads it reads like a Grisham novel. You won't uh, you won't believe it. Um, yeah, it's available on it's available on Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble. All right, Lou. Well, so that wraps up this episode of Sunday Sauce Pot, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks, Lou, and thanks, Luigi, for your contribution to the Italian American culture. Thank you so much, Lou. Thank you, Marty. Such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. Thank you. All right, guys. We'll see you next time here on Sunday Sauce Pot.